Hello guys and girls, Andy Ravel from eTechnics.com here and um, as I keep saying in all of our latest videos is we're mixing things up a little bit and we are changing it. We're not going to be doing reviews as such, we're going to be doing first looks on products and just generally stuff that no one else is going to be able to um, produce content for because there's so many uh, YouTube channels out there and so many websites out there who are producing um, videos of the same stuff. I mean, I've got so many products sort of scattered around the office at the moment, uh, eTechnics HQ, that you know, we could show you, oh, this is what this product is, unbox it, do the usual sort of stuff, but there's so many other websites out there doing exactly the same. So what we're hoping to do with our YouTube channel and our videos on eTechnics.com is to produce um, videos that are going to be sort of interviews, um, sort of having a look at um, various different places that we go, events, that kind of thing, as well as just showing you general um, sort of just general coverage that other sites may not be able to get the inside look on so we're gonna hopefully make it a little bit more unique and that's where today starts um, what we're actually doing today is something completely different that so many people have inundated us with emails and questions on YouTube on the forums and that kind of thing asking us to do it so here we are today we're gonna do how to build a computer um, this isn't going to be just one video of where we're going to show you this is a case, this is a process, this is a motherboard, this is it all together. We're going to split this up into sections. So today really starts us off with um, sort of your buying decisions, uh, well, your first buying decision. We're going to talk about processors. Now, for the novice users out there who aren't quite sure what a processor is, it's your CPU or central processing unit. Imagine it as the brain of your computer. Without it, you're not going to get anywhere, uh, but with it, this, the end, the possibilities really are endless. There's so many different decisions that um, you need to make with buying a processor that it can be a daunting task for novice users as well as even expert users. The amount of people that I get come to me asking me, should I get the Intel you know, i7, should I get the AMD Phenom X6? And uh, straight away, some of you novice users might be going Intel, AMD. So let's get started with who they are. Well, Intel and AMD are brands, just like you'd go out and you'd either buy a Ford or you'd go out and buy um, a Volkswagen. It's completely the same sort of decision. Obviously, they both have their pros, they both have their cons. So let's start with AMD. AMD, you will always find, are generally the cheapest, the better bang for buck manufacturer out of the two. So they do produce fantastic products, much like Intel do, um, but they do it with sort of um, money, budget in mind. So you will generally find that people go for AMD if they are strictly on a budget and they want to get the best bang for buck. Now back in the olden days it was always sort of the rule of thumb of AMD is better for gaming, Intel is better for sort of your general work and video rendering that kind of thing. In some ways, in, in sort of retrospects, that is still true but in other ways it's not. AMD are great for gaming but Intel have really stepped up the game with it as well. So straight away AMD if you are on a budget you are going to be going for AMD if you can sort of save a little bit more money then Intel may be the way to go but it all depends on what your needs are as well so AMD you will find have produced a lot of new products lately and um, they are really sort of you know going um, from strength to strength so AMD have produced sort of the Athlon 2 range as well as the Phenom 2 range now the difference between the two is L3 cache uh, I'm not going to sit here all day sort of describing every single little feature and what it does, but um, certain usage um, is where you're going to find the L3 cache coming into sort of um, its own. But if you are just your general user, you'll probably find that you wouldn't even notice it. Even an expert user, you'll probably find that the extra cache you won't notice. But there are a lot of people out there who want the best of the best, and that's why they're going to be going for a Phenom 2. Now, you get different ranges in the product range of AMD processors. So you get your dual core, your tri core your quad core and now your hexa core. Now it basically means you're either going to get two cores, three cores, four cores or six cores. Now AMD are working on an eight core version called Bulldozer but I'm permitted to not tell you anything about it whatsoever even though I don't really know that much myself. So what you actually find with AMD and their dual core, tri core, quad core, hexa core is what it is is technically um, in a nutshell it's multiple processors sort of clammed into one. So you'll find that, for instance, the dual core is technically two processors built into one processor to go onto your motherboard. So nice and simple, really. Obviously, tri-core is three cores, quad-core is four, and then hexa-core is six cores. So you can actually get sort of six physical processors built into one. And um, it's really that simple. 
Now, with AMD, you can um, buy them in OEM or retail versions, much like you can with Intel, though AMD are more popular with it. And this is basically what an AMD processor looks like. So, nice and simple, it's got a heatsink on the top so you can't crush the core, and it gives you better contact with the actual core itself. Now, this one is an AMD... Uh, let's look, turn it around the right way. It's an AMD Phenom 2 X4 980. So that's a quad core 980. Now 980 is just their model number. If you were to go onto the internet and type in AMD processor codes, there's actually a couple of websites out there who will give you all of the information on what them processor codes mean. So what 980 means, and what the sort of letters before it mean, the letters after, and most of them sort of refer to what the voltage um, is for the processor because obviously you can overclock and give it more volts, but that is for another video. And it also tells you the clock speed. Now clock speed is something that obviously is a personal preference. Um, some of the processors out there today are still running at sort of in the 2 gigahertz sort of market, others are running in the 3 gigahertz market. Obviously none have gone above that yet unless you're overclocking, um, much like some of the processors that I've got that I've had up to 5 gigahertz and beyond. But you'll find that it's generally down to what you need. So if you're just your general average user, a dual core is going to be fine for what you need and probably around sort of 2.93 gigahertz is going to be absolutely perfect. Obviously that's also going to save you money. Now if you're video rendering, that kind of thing, then you're going to be wanting to go sort of quad core to get full utilisation out of them cores to render your video work or your photo work. And obviously the higher the clock speed the better, coupled with some decent memory graphics and that kind of thing, and obviously a decent motherboard. But we will go through all of them um, particular aspects of a system in further videos. <coughs> now, the most popular processors on the market with AMD are sort of the Phenom 2 X4, so quad core, sort of 955, 965, 975. Now, they are exactly the same processor. They've, AMD have just bumped it up another 100 megahertz to give that extra power and slapped a nice uh, price tag on it. But when I say sort of nice, yes, there is a little bit of sarcasm there that they keep bumping up uh, the speed a little bit and bumping up the price in the same matter, but they're still cheaper than Intel. And speaking of Intel, Intel very much the same. Um, apart from having sort of Athlon 2 in it and Phenom 2, um, Intel do it slightly differently. They've got the i3, i5, and i7. Now, i3 is for your sort of low end usage, i5, your mainstream, i7 is your extreme. Now, with Intel, as I say, they do um, sort of OEM and retail, but it's normally retail that you'd get. And with the AMD retail, you might get it looking something like this, just a green box. You may get it in some other type of packaging, it all depends on the retailer. Intel, this is your box for your retail, um, so you get a clear view of what the processor would look like in the top. This is the newest um, i7s on the market, i7-2600K, and the reason that you get a big box is obviously you get the processor and you also get a heatsink. A little bit used this one, but it gives you an idea of what it looks like. Now, it's not going to be fantastic, so if you can get a good deal on one, brilliant, and then obviously you can buy a, a separate cooler on top of that because that one is going to whine after a while and it's not going to push through as much air as possible but obviously it does the trick, otherwise Intel wouldn't stock it with that. Um, so that's the whole sort of reasoning behind that. So if you can buy OEM, yeah, it's brilliant because you can save yourself some money to buy a, a better cooler, but you generally find that the warranties aren't as good on OEM products compared to retail products. So it's all down to a personal preference. Now, with Intel, you'll find that they're still stocking their older generation processors, Core i3, i5, i7, but also the second generation, as we know, as Sandy Bridge. There's some new ones coming out, Sandy Bridge E, Ivy Bridge, that kind of thing. But once again, I can't really tell you too much on that. Now, with Intel, they've re they've obviously named it i3, i5, i7 to give a clear clarification as to, depending on what type of user you are, depends really on what your type of usage is. So if you are the extreme user, you're going to go for an i7. Now, Intel also offer hyper-threading. For instance, this processor that came in here is the Core i7-2600K which means that it's a Core i7 and it has four physical cores, but it does have hyper-threading, which is like a virtual core, and it has two of them per core. So technically, we've got an eight-core processor here, but technically, we haven't. AMD are bringing out their eight-core processor, which is actually going to have eight physical cores, so there's going to be quite a big difference in that, but benchmarks and performance will show as, uh, obviously, AMD release that. With the Intel Core i7, you are going to get that extra um, sort of, you know, virtual cores, and with the Core i5, for instance, the 2500K, which is a fantastic processor, which we've also got here, and we've had that over 5 gigahertz, much like the i7, but it was a lot easier to get to because it is four cores, four threads, job done. 
problem with Intel is you are paying a little bit more, but you are getting slightly better performance. That's always been the rule of thumb since the beginning of time between the battle of AMD versus Intel. So it's really down to personal preference with that as well. It is much like buying a car. And going back to that sort of point of you're either going to buy a Ford or you're going to buy a Volkswagen or you're going to buy a Toyota or a Honda. There's so many brands out there. With this, there's two, AMD and Intel. But then you've got to choose what model you want. Do you want a Fiesta or do you want a Focus? Um, do you want a Golf or do you want a Polo? It's entirely up to you. It's personal preference. So all we can really say, and we're probably going to be repeating this um, sort of phrase in all of our videos, is it's personal preference. Go do your research and uh, that's the only way that you're really going to tell. Now, where do you research into it? Well, the first sort of stepping stone is going to be going to the manufacturer's website. So you need to decide what your budget's going to be. Is it going to be you know, trying to get the best value for money or do you really want the most extreme performance? If you want the best value for money, head on over to Google, type in AMD, go onto AMD's website and have a look at their products. Uh, that will really tell you all the main specifications, what sort of clock speed, how many cores it's got, that kind of thing. And then you can choose obviously a couple maybe um, to put in your shortlist as to what you want. With Intel, it's going to be exactly the same. If you want the most, um, you know, the best performance and don't mind spending that little bit extra, then go over to Google, type in Intel and uh, go to Intel's um, website. But going there, you can obviously do exactly the same and check out the main specifications, how many cores it's got, what sort of clock speed, what other little features it's got, whether it's got hyper-threading, that kind of thing. And uh, you can possibly add a few to your shortlist. You may even do a bit of both because you can't decide between AMD and Intel. So you've sort of gone over to AMD, found um, a possible equivalent to an Intel processor that you've already found. You may be looking at an i5-2500K and a Phenom 2 X4965, for instance. Um, they're, they're very much on par. The Intel's obviously slightly better. Um, but there's a place where you can find out which one performs better. And so once you've actually found out what ones are in your shortlist, you've got your list of possibly AMD, possibly Intel, possibly both. You can then go over to Google and search for them particular models. So it might be the Intel Core i5-2500K review. Type that at the end of it and you'll find websites much like ourselves at etechnics.com where you can find out how it actually performs in real world tasks. So that includes things like uh, benchmarks, just your general sort of, you know, how it performs on a day to day basis. Um, in sort of you know work related uh, benchmarks you then might find the website also does game related so you may find that certain processors are obviously going to give better performance in your games there's some games out there like Grand Theft Auto 4 that relies heavily on your processor so if you've got a dual core don't even think about running it quad core you're going to be absolutely fine with it you may have to tweak your settings depending on your graphics card but we talk about graphics cards in another review another video um, so what you've then got is obviously a list of sort of how it performs and then you know that should be your next point really finding out what one's going to be up to the performance that you're hoping to get when you buy a product just like you're going to go out and buy a car you've got expectations of how you want it to perform how many miles per gallon you want it to do um, how fast you want it to go what the brakes are going to be like it's exactly the same how many cores do you want what sort of speed do you want out of it and how's it going to perform in the sort of test that you do now you'll find that you may be playing Call of Duty and you go onto a review site that sort of deals with Battlefield. No good for you really, but it does give you a good sort of comparison as to how it's going to perform in similar sort of games. And then what you can do is go back to Google and search for further reviews and possibly find even more information on, uh, on the actual products and games and applications that you use. There's so many websites out there, review websites, and there's more and more popping up every single day. But be warned, use the trusted ones. There's a lot out there that are just out for the money. And uh, I'll be honest, we don't make that much money. So that is really that step of finding what process is right for you. Then it's just a matter of finding a decent, reputable retailer who stocks that product for the price point that you've got in mind. Now, be realistic, guys, because if you're hoping to get an i5-2500K for 80 quid, there's the door. You've got to be realistic with it. Obviously, you can, whilst you're Googling around for the sort of specs and everything, have a look at the price because you may think, Okay, I want the i7-2600K, sounds perfect for me. Four cores, eight threads, I'm up for that. Then you look at the price and maybe, you know, well out of reach. So you may have to drop down to the i5-2500K, which is still a fantastic processor, don't get me wrong. But obviously, you're not going to get them extra sort of, uh, you're not going to get the hyper-threading and that kind of thing. So please, be realistic. There are plenty of forums on the internet as well where you can find information, much like the ones over at etechnics.com. 
head over to there if you've got any buying decisions. We have got sections devoted to all different components of the system. And you can ask people, and you'll probably find that a lot of people on there, if you are searching for some of the latest processors or on the market, you may find that they've got ex the exact one that you need. So you can ask them directly, how are you finding it in this application? How are you finding it in that one? I've got a choice between this processor and that, that processor. So what, what one do I go with? Um, so there, there is a lot of information out there and use the internet to your advantage. There's so much a wealth of information out there. And that's all we can really say today. Processors is um, probably the first starting point because once you've got that down, you can then decide what motherboard you want because the motherboard and the processor go hand in hand. If you've got an AM3 Plus processor, which is the type of socket, and then obviously you're going to want a motherboard that caters for it. Just like, I'm going to go back to it again, just like a car, if you've got 17 inch wheels, you need 17 inch tyres to go on it when you replace them. You're not going to buy 17 inch wheels and try and fit 19 inch tyres on it. It's just not going to happen. You need something that's going to fit something. So the processor needs to fit the motherboard. Next time we will be talking about the motherboard, then we'll stem on to sort of memory because obviously that goes hand in hand as well. Whether you need dual channel, tri channel, but uh, we don't want to confuse you too much for this video. Well, I've been talking now for about 16 minutes, uh, quite a long time, but hopefully it's given you a lot of information into the buying decision of a processor. We are going to, as I say, split these videos up into a lot of sections. So we've got, this one is our processor, we've got motherboard, memory, graphics card, storage, case, and then uh, hopefully at the end we're actually going to build a system up, um, possibly an Intel, possibly an AMD, who knows. But um, for now, hopefully we'll see you on the forum, see you on the website, um, and we can hopefully help you with them buying decisions. Until next time, see you later.